Hello Rocket Builders. It's coming up on the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. That's a pretty auspicious occasion. We need to celebrate. As a model rocket builder, the best way I can celebrate is to build a scale working model of the Apollo 11 spacecraft. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Remember folks, I've been certified to build and fly rockets up to level 3. If you don't have these qualifications, you might want to consider a simpler project and perhaps join one of your local or national organizations. Rocketry is a very safe hobby if you follow some very simple guidelines. Okay, so if you remember my Saturn 1B build, I had a 3D printed model of the uh, Apollo spacecraft. Uh, I don't have the uh, capsule with me here, but I do have a tower which is the same scale that what I use. So this was 1 22nd scale. Now for the Saturn 1B that made a rocket that was pretty tall. So doing a Saturn 5 at that same scale would be one that is um, very large and prohibitively expensive both to build and fly. So I'm going to scale it down a bit. What I had done in terms of planning for this was I started looking at what body tube sizes are available and my goals were high power, uh, not a real performer, but definitely something that uh, would make an impressive flight. So my next step with that was looking at body tube sizes and with commercially available body tube sizes we had a few options. So I started building capsules of an appropriate scale. Okay, now we want to be impressive too. So this one is the one I elected to go with. This is a 153rd scale. Um, obviously it's not going to be red in color when I'm done and I'll show you that shortly. Uh, but this will go with a seven and a half inch body tube size. So blue tube makes one. Uh, there may be others as well. I haven't really looked too far into that at this point. Uh, so this is the scale I decided to go with. Now, one of the reasons why I went with this slightly larger one versus the smaller one, this is the launch tower at 122nd scale. This is the launch tower at 153rd scale. Okay, at a certain point, this just becomes too flimsy, and I really don't trust this tower to go any smaller than that, but it does work quite fine on the 153rd scale capsule. Okay. Now there's a lot of stuff I'm going to do different from what I did with my Saturn 1B. I am not hand making body tubes, um, so fiberglass work, uh, all of that stuff that um, can be expensive will be minimized. The other advantage of doing a lot of this stuff as 3D printed is I have the materials available uh, and I can defer some of the budget items until later in the build, which for me personally is a, an issue right now. Okay, so. We're going to have mostly 3D printed. Now, as I said, I am going to do things a little bit differently. So, whereas with the 1B, I made a fiberglass body tube with an 8-inch diameter. For this one, a 3D printed body tube is fine. Uh, it's fairly lightweight, and it allows me to add a lot more details. This is not my final product. I plan on adding a lot more details to this uh, as I go along. And I will certainly be publishing the 3D models as I go as well, so you can build your own. Okay, so I printed some other test pieces as well, so I can see, you know, scale, how they fit together and so on. This is not a mating part uh, for a few reasons. Um, one of the things I faced as I started looking at modifying my 122nd scale models to the new size is that it was a lot easier just to keep it at 122nd scale in the FreeCAD software than it was to try and resize everything, which basically meant redrawing everything. Okay, so I am designing at 122nd scale, um, and that has some implications as I scale down. So this I just printed at a reduced scale, 41.51% of the original, uh, but that means things like wall thicknesses are a little thinner. Okay, so. That's the original wall thickness, and compare that with what is produced by the capsule. 
significantly different. Okay, So I do have to go back and make some changes to accommodate the fact that it will be scaled down. Okay, so looking at that, I made test pieces. Okay, so this is just the top part of the uh, Lunar Excursion Module Adapter. And this is the back end piece of the service module. Okay, but you can see I've made it a lot thicker. Um, this is just a little bit too flimsy. I don't think it would survive a land on a rock or anything like that. So uh, I definitely want this thicker. And I can look at mating the two components and seeing how they fit. Now this is a little bit loose, which is why I do the testing. So I had to adjust a little bit to get one that's a nice tight fit. It doesn't wiggle. Okay. I can always sand down to make it a little bit smaller, but adding to it after the fact is a little more difficult. And instead of printing the entire article, I just print some test pieces like this that will allow me to do things um, just as a testing method. Now thinking ahead to recovery, um, there are some other things that I can do as well. Um, my goal here is to have a single deployment rocket. It's simpler. Uh, I'm not looking for a high flyer, so I will scale my motor so that the altitudes aren't excessive. Uh, and it just makes a lot of things easier to manage. One of the issues I had with my Saturn 1B is I had a body tube within a body tube that had to mate. And if the alignment's off by just a little bit, you run into a lot of issues on the field, which is what happened. Okay. Um, so single deployment is my goal. However, I do want to make it capable of doing dual deployment as well, because eh, who knows, down the road I might want to put a bigger motor in it and see how high it goes. So uh, I do want to retain that option. Now part of that, plastic is not a good uh, piece to um, mount your uh, parachutes to, so uh, I was thinking a little ahead of myself here. Now, this is a plastic the same size, but it's basically uh, thinking about a quarter inch uh, plywood um, spacer. So you will have the eye bolt that mounts in here and in the bottom, it can fit into place. That'll glue into top and you'll have your eye hole come out the bottom. Now, there were some issues here again, which is why I prototype. The distance isn't right because of scaling issues. So when I reprinted my uh, second one, the one that fits correctly, I adjusted for this as well. I'd also had a very large opening in that one. For the final one, I will have one that's appropriate for an eye bolt. That fits into place. The capsule fits into place and so on. Now there is a little bit of a gap here, but again, I can sand things down. Uh, there's going to be some variance in the actual plywood piece anyway, so that's that. Now the other thing to be concerned about is this is plastic. Ejection charges don't work that well with materials that melt. Uh, so there's going to have to be some sort of stuffer tube in there that would um, separate the heat of the hot gases from um, the plastic parts. So this may be rethought, uh, but that's something that we'll address later. So where things stand right now, I am actively adding details. Uh, the command service module I hope to have released within about a week so you can start printing your own. The tower is already developed as is uh, the launch escape system. Uh, one of the issues that I'm actually having with this though is I have a horrible 3D printer and the quality just isn't there. So uh, this piece in particular gives me a lot of problems. The larger pieces not so much. So I can use it for this, but I'm going to have to go to my local makerspace or public library to print out uh, this and also the tower itself because you can see the quality is a little bit less there. Um, but that's an issue with my printer and not with the models. Uh, I am going to be doing detailed parts of the whole thing. So the service module, uh, the lamb attachment, there's going to be a lot more details on this and obviously it won't be printed in red. Uh, but those models should be available within the next couple of weeks. For the remaining components, I'm going to rough them out like I have here so that you can at least build them even without the details and test uh, prior to um, final 
uh, model design because it does take a lot of time. Um, but I will make them available as they become available so you can build your own. If you're new to 3D printing, uh, you have to be aware that most people who succeed at 3D printing treat it as their hobby, not as a tool. Unless you're going pretty high-end on a 3D printer, you're going to run into issues. Um, and as evidence of that, I present this. Now, this is an issue I've had with my printer for a couple of years now, and I've had pretty limited success in fixing it. So, uh, there's a lot more involved in 3D printing than you're going to realize just watching some videos on YouTube. It is worth trying. It is definitely, I mean, you can see the results. It's uh, very satisfying but it is infinitely frustrating. So prepare yourself in advance. Okay, so we've got some fun building coming up and uh, yeah, so in the meantime, uh, subscribe so you can see more. Uh, like obviously, because uh, that helps with uh, the stats on the channel and YouTube is all about stats. Um, I will be publishing the models as available. I will be announcing it both in my Twitter feed and on the Rocketry Forum. So if you're following either my build thread in the Rocketry Forum or on my Twitter, you will see updates as they become available. And I'll have links to both below. So in the meantime, have fun building rockets and uh, let's make Apollo 50th a, uh, a day to remember. 20 seconds, guidance alert, the guidance system now going internal. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero.